That way I don't make the mistake. I don't go in the wrong direction. I don't follow the wrong path. And then in the end, all this work be in vain. Don't let your work be in vain. Let your work be in according to the will and the way of the Lord. That way we don't make no mistakes. And then we know for a fact that if we die and we leave this place and we go to that place which God has prepared for his children, that when we get there, we will hear, well done. And that's what we are looking for. We are in study. We, this is an opportunity for us to be able to study God's word and so that we can grow in grace. In other words, in order for you to be prepared for this test. And guess what the test is? The test is entirely teaching us how to embrace the cross. We have to learn how to embrace the cross as Christians. Embracing the cross takes a lot of teaching because we need to learn how to let go and let God. In other words, don't hold on to this world, but hold on to the hope of an eternal life. That's what you should be holding on to. That's what you should be holding and grasping on to because we want the hope of an eternal life, and that eternal life is only in Jesus the Christ. Only in Jesus the Christ. So we are striving to make it in. They said the righteous scarcely make it in. We are striving to make it in, but we want to make it in with flying colors. Amen. We want to be able to make it in with flying colors. We want to, when we go before the throne of God, and, and at that time when he, come, when he comes up to judging, where he said, well done, that means I'm in. I ain't looking back. I don't know who back there. I, I hope and I pray that you can make it in as well. We all want to make it in. Guess what? You can't make it in and, and put me in. It's not designed that way. You can't save nobody else but yourself. You have no way of saving no one but yourself. The Bible says that. Save yourself. Yourself. From this untowards generation. Save yourself. Be more concerned about you and where you want to go. You can't save. I can't save my mama. I can't save my papa. I can't save my children. I can't save my wife. I could only save me. We are all accounted for Yourself. You ain't accounted for no one else but you. You can, you're concerned about everybody else. You love one another, you love everybody else. Amen. But the Bible and, 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 and as it was written, love your neighbor as yourself. You ain't gonna treat you bad. And expect good. Now nah, that don't make sense. What makes sense is that you're gonna do right. Like, amen. And if you want to do right by yourself, especially if you want to go to heaven, amen. just do what is right. Do what is the acceptable will of God. So therefore, we should be learning how to develop, amen. developing and maturing. Yes, it's on the same level. If you ain't developing it, you aren't maturing. If every time some problems come that you you wanna you wanna run away from your problem, is that getting resolved or solved? No. That just means that when you wherever you go, the problem still exists. You need to learn how to deal with your situation. And some things we need counseling. Something we need to talk to the to, to, to the Savior. We need to ask him to guide us. And we want to be guided through all through through all truth. And the reality of the truth is understanding God's word. Because God's word is a light in dark places. You will never be walking around in darkness once you are walking in the light of his love. So when we are talking about developing as a Christian. Becoming more Christ-like. Why we are so, why I'm so strong, stronghold on 
changing into the image of Christ is because we cannot be considered a Christian if you're not trying to be like Christ. You have to be striving to be like Christ in order to be a Christian. You became a Christian in obedience to the word of God. Obeying the truth and, and, and doing what the truth said that you need to do, that's how we became a Christian. And by doing so, now you are baby, you're basically a babe, a newborn babe, a newborn creature in the body of Christ. So therefore you come into this arena without having any knowledge. What you think you knew or what you do know may not be what you really need to know. So now you study to show yourself approved. A work might need to not be in a shame, but can rightly divide the word of truth. This is important. Every Christian, doesn't matter who you are, if you are reading, studying, and being guided, now you know how to rightly divide. You're not going all off on the right and the left field, but you can, you, you are able to understand God's word. And this is simply, this is simply, there's nothing difficult about it, but what makes it simple is that you need to have an open heart. Your, your heart needs to be open to God's word. No matter what you hear from other places, if it ain't what is written, then it's a problem. I tell any and everyone, wherever you wanna you wanna tell me the truth, give me book, chapter, and verse. Give me book, chapter, and verse. I need to be able to go and, and, and analyze. I need to go and look at it for myself. I want to make sure what you're telling me is something sound. I want to make sure that it's not something that you just made up. And folks, today they go making up a lot of stuff. I'm going to tell you everything that I can, that the Lord said. The Lord ain't said that. I need to read it. When I read it, then I know it. And I know it because I read it for myself. Now, you can tell me all what you want to tell me is you talking. But unless I'm going to be able to, to visually uh, look into that myself, that's your say. I need to know, is it written? And this is what Jesus was all about. In every, in every avenue of his life, we all should be learning this. And, I, and we're going to learn this even more as you continue to grow in grace. We learn that his that the, that the greatest thing about Christ in those thirty and three years when he was walking upon the face of this earth, his biggest thing was making sure that he was doing what was the acceptable will of God. That means he kept walking upright before God, and he kept doing what was the acceptable will. Not your will, but Jesus said, not my will, but let thy will be done. So we are all about his will, not mine. I don't, my only will is to do whatever he says so that I don't fall off on the wrong track. Now, we are discussing that there are five important things that partakes in the Lord's worship. And we talk about worshiping. We're not talking about coming here dancing and praising. Because this is not the place uh, for that. This is the place for true worship. Where we come to worship God in the Spirit in the truth. In the truth. For they that worship God, they must worship Him in the Spirit. Yes, spirit. See, if you ain't worshiping in the Spirit, then then where is the truth? You know, we 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 come we come physically in our physical in our physical standards to worship God because God has blessed each and every one of us with the breath of life. He's asking you to take that same breath of life and to glorify God. In other words, use what he gave you to bless him. 
Use what you have to gain what you want from the Lord. If not, you're going to find yourself following just like this world. You want to add and you want to subtract from what God has not commanded. We don't want to fall into that category. We don't even care what the world do. That's their problem. In the Lord's church, we're going to worship him how he has requested for us to worship. The only five items that is used in worship. Singing, praising, the teaching of God's word, the communion, and the giving. Mm -hmm. Anything else is too much. Anything less than that is it, it, not enough. Just do like he said we are to do it. And we must develop. We must be developing. Listen, uh, uh, young ones, you ain't too young and you ain't too old mm -hmm. to learn the truth. Amen. Amen. You ain't too young and you ain't too old to learn the truth. It is not that difficult to understand. It is quite simple and is made simple enough for even the simplest a child could understand what God says. Don't make it complicated. Don't even try to wrestle with the facts. Accept the truth and obey. Jesus was a man that walked around in a humble and a submissive way of how he were reaching the hearts of men. He was humble, he humbled himself in every situation. A lot of times there was things going on. He was never judgmental about it. Only time he became a judgmental or he made his his point was when 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 the Pharisees uh or the Sadducees would, would get to a point where they wanted to call themselves quoting the scriptures but did not have no understanding. And he had, and he called them several times, you hypocrites. You call yourself knowing the law, understanding what God says. But 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 yet you 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 do it that in a in a way to talk. I'm praying for my mother. I'm praying for my father. I'm asking you to heal them and, 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 to, and to give them the opportunity to be able to gain back their strength. Number one, you're asking. Number two, you're making sure that you're giving thanks. The Bible says give thanks always. Number two, you're saying to God, Lord, I'm thanking you in advance. Even if it had not been done, you're going to tell God anyhow, I'm going to thank you because I know you're going to do it. I know by the love that you have for me, Lord, that you will go ahead and you're gonna, you, you're gonna, you, you, you're gonna, you're gonna prove to me that you are God. And by your faith, now it, it, it requires a part of you. Now, your faith has to be an active faith. Your faith has to be well enough that when you go to God, like you say, when you go to God, you go before the throne holy. You don't go there. Uh, uh, nonchalant, not meaning you're not really sure why you're acting, but you're acting anyhow. No, you ask in faith and you go before the throne of God boldly. Okay, you're asking Him boldly that Lord, I'm, 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 I'm coming to you on behalf of. But Eric may be saying, Hey, my mama ain't feeling well, and I'm talking to God. He's doing that for himself. He don't need to wait until Sunday morning and then say, church, I need you have the right. You who are a member of the law church, you have the right to approach God for yourself. And you could pray right then and there. You don't need to wait. You know, you don't need to wait until you have the right. You have you have a direct line to the Father. Okay? Everybody else don't. Even though the Lord God hears everybody, he ain't going to entertain everybody. But those that belong to him, he hears. So, and then we want to make sure that in all things, the purpose and the reason why we're asking God because we need help. Uh, Brother Keaton can't fix the problem. And Brother Anthony is sick. 
Peaky didn't fix it. He can be me. He can make me a good pot of chicken noodle soup, you know? And they say that, that should probably help him to, to get better and feel better. It sounds good. It may taste good. But it ain't going to make me better. What's going to make me better is because he, he going to God in faith. And he going to God praying and asking God to do this in the mighty name of Jesus. And then you're giving God credit. Lord, I'm thanking you for making this possible. I'm thanking you for, 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 for blessing me. I'm thanking you, God, for making, for making all things uh, perfect. So you're giving God credit. So learn to ask God, thank God, and give God credit. Okay, and you're giving God credit because you know that God has already done it. And when you speak in that way, you speak in the faith. You're, 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 you're basically prophesying in advance of say, Lord, I know that you're going to move. And, 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 and in the name of Jesus, it will be done. And Jesus said that. Whatever you go to the Father and ask in my name, I will do it. Okay, so you're asking because you know that he's going to do it for you. And he's going to do it because he's going to let you know that I'm with you no matter what. So, so we're going to look at we're going to look at just a few scriptures here that uh, that 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 would help to point out a few a few uh, what are some conditions of an acceptable prayer. What uh, and, and you guys gave me uh, going in faith, praying for one another, and praying for help. Okay, so we started off with that. And we're picking up from right where that's at. So we've been saying that what are some ways that we could go to God and, and knowing that when we go to God and we're praying, we're asking, we're we, we asking for help. Um, what, what, what would be the right attitude, the right mentality when we, when we go to God in prayer? Now, I don't have a reader, so unfortunately I'm going to have to go ahead and put these scriptures up for you. Uh, James. In the book of James, in the book of James, chapter 4, no, I'm sorry, James chapter 1, okay. James chapter 1 and, and verse 6 and 7, James states, But let him ask in faith, not wavering, for he that wavered is like is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and its toss. Okay. Uh, everyone, everyone in here been to the beach before, right? Huh? Yes. Yes. Okay, and, 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 and you guys see the wave coming in like this? Yes, yes. The wind is what's pushing it. The wind is what's pushing it. The currents of the wind is what's pushing the wave. And sometimes it picks up and it gets a little rough. Mm -hmm. It constantly does that. Mm -hmm. What happens is that your faith need not to be like the wind that everything that comes uh, your way that you like the wave. That's how the wave does. You know, it, 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 it goes like, a, that's what's called wavering. When, 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 when it's like you, 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 you can't seem to stand up straight. Okay, wavering means that. It means that you need to be firm. Your faith needs to be solid. That even if the wind, the way the wave come, you still stand. The wave will just pass by you. It may, it may what you call going through you. It's not going through. It's just going around you. Because it ain't gonna go through you. It's gonna go around you. So you're like a solid. You're like this pole. You know, you standing firm into the ground. You are planted. Therefore, the wave ain't even gonna move you because you're like a solid rock. You are standing on the rock of the foundation of Christ. That's why your faith needs not to waver. Okay, you don't need to have a wavering faith. Your faith needs to be firm. It needs to be sure. You know, in, in, in the church, uh, 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 the church of Christ is the ground and the pillar of the truth. So you don't need to be wavering nowhere when it comes to your faith. Secondly, um, James also said, for let 
that may not think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. That means if your faith is wavering, uh, if your faith is wavering, Kyle, you know, if your faith is wavering, and, and, and for some reason you can't seem to, uh, you can't seem to have faith enough to to trust God that He can and He will, um, then then that means that you don't really believe that God could do anything, you know, and and and, and, and that will cause you, that will cause God not to God God God's gonna move in those, I move through those that have the faith to believe that He can and that He will uh, do it. Okay, so. James teaches us how our faith should never waver. One major fact that James had pointed out. All right, now, 1 John 5, 1 John, 1 John chapter 5 and verse number 14. Uh, John the Revelator says this, and this is the confidence. Uh, Write that down, write that down. That's one thing. This is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So, number two, when you go to God and you're asking in faith, then you need to have confidence. This this to this to everyone in here. This is to everyone in here. Sister Ebony, uh, uh, Sister Jasmine, um, Leroy, and and Kyle, and and Jackie, and you know everyone in here. When you go to ask God anything, go to God having the confidence. Amen. When you want something. You're not going to go and not ask if you're not sure. You're going to ask because you're sure this is exactly what you're asking for. So you have to have confidence. Uh, if, I, if, 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 if I want some cake, stand up here and I'm going to shake and I'm going to do all this and all of that. <laughs> because I want some cake. What are you dancing for? You got ants in your pants? You need to use the restroom? If you want some cake, then you have to, all you got to do is ask. 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 May I please have me a slice of some cake? But you're asking with confidence. With confidence. All of that ain't gonna get you no cake. No, no. I, I, listen, you need to go use the restroom going over there. That's true. But you want that, so you're gonna ask in faith. In faith. And you're asking it also in confidence. in confidence. You ain't going shady as if oh, I'm afraid to ask because uh, he may say no. And even if you ask in faith and the answer is no, at least you ask. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> We got to learn how to do things without being afraid to do it. Exactly. Don't be scared or scared like you see in the 21st century. But you need to learn how to go and ask in confidence. Okay? Everything you ask is not what's going to be given. Okay? And, I, and there's a lot of reason why I'm saying that because we may be asking God, oh Lord, I need a I need this, I need that, because you have wants. Mm -hmm. And God is saying that he may not say anything at this moment. He's going to keep it silent because it's not time. Maybe God is not ready to bless you with that yet. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't get an answer, that don't mean it's a no. 
And it don't mean that it's a yet. It just means you're going to have to hold on or wait until I know that the time is ready for me to do that. Now, some things God already have an answer and it's final. We have to be able to understand that's God's final word. One of the good reasons is when we see we lose a loved one. We pray and we ask God, heal, 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 heal. And the Lord say, okay, I'm going to fix the problem. But when he fix it and he says, okay, I, I, I took that, that person away from the pain and the sorrow. Now you can't get mad with him because you asked him to fix it. Right. So he fixed it the right way. There is no more burden. There is no more hardship. There is no more heartaches. Even though we are going to have go through some pain, the point is that he's given us or he's blessing us with his answer. Amen. Love God even the more. I thank you for making that situation fix. Amen. You got to learn how to thank God even if it don't look like you need to thank him anyhow. Yes. Because we need to understand that that's how you develop more of a maturing mentality. Your attitude begins to mature much better. Now, so we, 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 we uh, in a current first John, when you act, you gotta act having the confidence. We, we, you gotta have confidence. Without confidence, uh, your confidence will cause you uh, not to, uh, uh, and also in first John, first John chapter three, first John chapter three, uh, and, and around verse number 22, uh, and, and whatsoever we ask, uh, what and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we kept his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So, there's one thing, a couple of things. Let's put, let's look at this. You could ask God for something, but then what are you doing? You got to do what you're asking God to do. You, in faith, you're asking him in faith, and then at the same token, at the same token, you still got to be able to be about your father's business. Amen. That means you got to do what is the will of God. Amen. We don't go to God and ask God to do this for us, do this for us, do this for us. Are you asking me to keep doing for you? And what do you? What have you done for God lately? Amen. What have you done for God lately? You keep asking for everything that you want Him to do for you. What have you done for him? It's a two-way street. You can't keep asking and ain't expect to get nothing. That means that you're only in this for yourself. You're not in this for yourself. You're not here for you. You're here for God. So you need to be used by God in any and every which way that he sees fit. Mm -hmm. So that he will get the glory. If not, the glory you will be trying to get for yourself. Don't Put yourself in that situation. Understand the importance that you who are a called Christian, you are called to be of service. And therefore, by you being of service, uh, you must realize that it is important to keep his commandments. And, and, and his commandments are not grievous. Uh, and Jesus gave us a new commandment. And that new commandment is what? That you love one another. Yeah, don't you ever forget that. Don't you ever forget that. That's his new commandment. That you love one another. We got to remember that. That's his new commandment. Don't, for, don't, don't forget the other commandments. They are still binding on us. Today as Christians, because God said it, love God with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul. You know, if you read the Ten Commandments, you realize that they are important. Okay, we or only thing under the Ten Commandments that we are not binded on need no more is uh, to keep the Sabbath day holy. Um, that's that that's been done away with. That's been done away with. Folks don't want to believe that, but it's written. 
that has been done away with for a, for a particular major reason um, because they have polluted it to a point that it is no longer um, God requires of it anymore. Uh, but what he requires is that we come together on the day that he has commanded. Amen. And we are commanded to come to worship upon the first day of the week. And that first day of the week is on Sunday. On Sunday. Okay. So that hand, that, that, that covenant had been changed into a new and a better covenant. Uh, we are now on the grace and truth. Uh, okay, so, um, so we, so we don't ask God and continue to ask God and not trying to do God's, do what it is to please God or to do what is necessary for us to inherit an eternal life. Okay. Um, also, going to the book of, going to the book of, um, of First Timothy. Okay, and going to the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, and verse number 8. 1 Timothy, chapter 2. Alright, 1 Timothy, chapter 2, and verse number 8. And, 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 and Paul, Paul spoke unto teaching young Timothy how we young, when we say young meaning, well, it doesn't matter how old you are, you're still young. Okay, you're still young. Once you're living, you're still young. Okay. Uh, I will therefore that all that, that men pray everywhere. Okay. Paul is saying and telling us as Christians that we ought to be praying everywhere. Uh, when it says everywhere, it means everywhere. Mm -hmm. Wherever you go, you go around your family and, and you say you're a Christian, but let's say the family got together and, and you say, family, could we just take one second, just one second real quick so that we could pray? You know, that, 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 that is something huge. That's something major. Mm -hmm. If you could stop everybody from what they're doing, because it's a family, you know, you, today you see me, you may not see me tomorrow, but let me pray right now. And you just stand there, Lord, I, I pray for everybody right here, that you protect and you keep them shield from every hurt, harm, and danger. Father God, that you continue to bless them in the mighty name of Jesus. Do you know when you say stuff like that, everybody be like, wow, thank you. Thank you, thank you. You don't know why the reason why you pray, but you let them know. They, okay, are you a Christian? Oh, yes, I am. I'm a disciple of Christ, Amen. and we should be we should be happy and glad to say that and say that with confidence. Amen. We 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 gotta be able to say that with confidence. So we want we want to make sure uh, we, we we did put confidence up there. Okay, we want to make sure that. Uh, we should be praying always, uh, uh, lifting up hands without without wrath and with, with, without doubting. So, uh, uh, you, you, um, uh, another way for us to be when we are praying, you pray without doubt. That means. You're not gonna, you're not gonna waver your your prayer, okay? You're gonna pray without doubting. Okay? You gotta go to God with a with with, with a with, with a mentality that you're praying and you're asking God. Now let's go to the book of Matthew. What Matthew has recorded in the Bible for us to Matthew chapter eighteen. Matthew chapter 18 uh, and uh, verse number 19. Uh, 18 and verse number 19. And Jesus says in the book of Matthew chapter 18 and chapters, yeah, chapter 18 and verse number 19. Jesus said, 
And again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching and anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them that my Father which is in heaven. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Come on here, please. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The Bible says when, 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 when two come together, okay, it don't even have to be a whole, it don't even have to be everybody. But Keith may have a good relationship with, uh, with Mildred, right? Mildred. Mildred, wake up. Mildred. 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 Oh, you can sleep. Don't go knock out with him. Help me, Jesus. Uh, 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 Keith may have a good, good relationship with uh, Nadej. Nadej, come here real quick. Okay. Right? And. Oh, Lord. And. Oh, Lord. And, and, and oh, he, uh, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Don't ask anybody uh, opinionated views at this point. Um, uh, he may have a good relationship with, 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 with Nadej, and, 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 and he. He wants to be in agreement. Uh, he wants somebody to be in agreement with him when he goes into prayer. So what he will do is that he will say, hey, Mildred, I, I want to pray. And I need, uh, uh, I'm sorry, um, Nadesh. Nadesh. And, 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 uh, and he may say, he may say to Nadesh, Nadesh, let, let's, uh, let, um, I, I, I really need to pray. But I need to touch and agree in prayer. So, he, he may not be with her. Uh, keep this in mind. We're not always going to be next to each other. Okay? But you got a phone. I got a phone. And a lot of us spend a lot of times on our phones. We're talking about everything else. But we ain't talking to God. He calls. Keep me calls up Nadej and say, Sister Nadej, uh, I, I, I really need to talk to God and I need to. I need for us to, to to be in agreement. That means that as he's going to God in prayer, she's also praying along with him. When we come together in worship, when this man or whoever is up here praying, all minds and heart needs to be also praying. Prayer is important. Why we are praying together? Yes. Because we are talking. To God. Oh, to God. One man is praying. When that man is praying, you need to be consecrated. Your mind needs to be focusing that that prayer is to touch God in faith. Okay. What Keaton is doing with the dad is just saying, uh, it doesn't matter who it is. He may have whoever, somebody in his family, some close member, and he's saying, he's going to God, he's praying, he's saying, and he's talking to God. Prayer gives you opportunity. You don't have to come to God in any special format. Just pray. And when you pray, you're praying in faith. I'm praying and asking. Lord Mildred is, Sister Mildred is in the hospital. And, and Lord, I, we, 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 we come together in the name of Jesus. Where the Bible just declared that where one or two come together in my name. Where one or two come together and they are touching. That means they are touching in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Spiritually, they are spiritually minded because they are they are both praying and asking God to move or to heal Sister Mildred. Mm -hmm. Now, once they're through with their prayer, they're saying, God, we thank you for moving in this situation in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now the two of them walk away from God have a seat. Thanks. Okay. Now the two of them could walk away from that prayer. Knowing that the hands of God is going to move. The hand of God is going to move simply because they have faith. To ask God in faith and in confidence without doubting, without having some other consideration. They're saying, God, I know that you're going to do this for us. The results is going to be proven because the next day they may say, they may all of a sudden see Sister Miller. Come in, come in there. Hey, everybody. Wow. It did work. Wow. We talked to God yesterday and, and he healed her right away. And, and it, the power is in your prayers. Amen. There is power in 
and praying. Mm -hmm. Because you have faith enough to, 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 to trust that God can and that God will uh, do so. Uh, and, and you're doing that because you trust God that he will. So uh, you, you, you're praying. Again, you, you, you come right back to this, right? You're praying uh, without doubt and you're praying in faith. Okay? So the power in prayer is also through faith. All right. Um, uh, we don't have to stop right here. <laughs> the time's going to up with us. But anyhow, well, prayerfully again next week we'll come back. We'll we'll we we'll, we'll look at a couple more here, and then we'll look at what God will not hear. Okay, so so far I'm telling you all what God will hear and what is acceptable. When we come back next week, we're gonna finish two more parts. I want to add to this, and then it's gonna go. Then we're gonna go into the things that you don't want to come to God and ask in prayer that he's not going to entertain. He's not going to want to hear because you, it, 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 you are not coming to God in prayer on the foolish things or the materialistic things in this world. These things has no value. What has value is understanding the word of God. All right. So you've been a good class. We're going to consider self dismiss and let us get ready for worship. Yes. Day, night, so. All right, good. Let's, let's get ready.